Hello, it's X-Ray Bob here, and today we're going to go over the inverse square law. So a little uh, lecture, and then we'll do two math problems. Electromagnetic energy, radiation intensity, is inversely related to the square of the distance from the source. So if you're one foot away from the X-ray tube, you're going to have one intensity, and if you're two feet away, it's going to be one quarter that intensity. And the reason for we see for this rapid decrease in in intensity when we increase the distance is cuz the total light coming out of the tube is spread out in both x and y directions. So it's spread out over a larger area and that area increases in both dimensions as we get further away. So let's give you a little figure here about the inverse square law and most forces um in, like gravity or electricity or magnetism follow this inverse square law because they spread out evenly in all directions across a given area. And when you're spreading out evenly in all directions, we call that isotropically. So here we see a source, and when we're one uh, unit of distance away, it's that whole uh, X-ray field is over one square inch. But when we double that distance, we're now having that field spread out over four square inches because it increased in X as well as Y. So that same intensity that was over one square inches when we doubled the distance is now one quarter that intensity because we're over four times the area. Another way to look at it is if we think of each dot as an X-ray photon, at one distance we've got 16 X-ray photons per square inch. But when we double that distance, now we've only got four X-ray photons in every square inch. And it's not just um, with X-rays. Here we've got a little example showing us uh, sound. And so at one distance away, you're going to hear maybe a volume of 10, not a volume of 8. And then when you're double that distance, that volume is going to be cut to one quarter its value. Um, so a volume of 2. All right, let's scooch me back down here to my corner. And the formula that you'll use is intensity 1 over intensity 2 equals distance 2 squared over distance 1 squared. And actually, I prefer this formula down here. I1 over I2 equals D2 over D1 squared. I1 is the intensity measured at distance 1, and I2 is the intensity measured at distance 2. And there's one disclaimer that we need to get out there, and that's, you know, this inverse square law works fine for a point source. So that's an infinitely small uh, point where all the light's coming out of. Uh, but if you have an extended source, like a two-foot-long fluorescent lamp, and you're very close to it, you're going to not follow the inverse square law because that lamp is so long and you're so close to it. So the rule of thumb we use for that is we're going to say that as long as you're seven times away, seven times the longest dimension of the source away, you can treat it as a point source. So if it's a two foot long fluorescent lamp, as long as you're 14 feet away or more, you can treat it as a point source. And all these problems we're going to do, we're going to treat as point source. So here's the first problem. Radiographer A is receiving five millirads per second of scatter radiation standing three feet away from a patient. What rate of radiation does radiographer B receive if they're standing seven feet away? And we're going to treat the patient scatter as a point source. So first, let's find out what our givens are. We've got I1 right there in the problem, 5 millirads per second, and D1, hey, we're three feet away. And we've got D2, what's going to happen at seven feet away? And what we're going to solve for is I2. All right, so to do the math, we dig out our formula, I1 over I2 equals D2 over D1 squared, and we start plugging and chugging. So I1 is 5 millirads a second, that divided by I2 is going to equal D2, which is 7 feet squared, over D1, 3 feet squared. We flip that I2 to one side, we flip that ratio of distances to the other side, and using our incredible algebraic skills. We've got 5 millirads per second times 3 feet squared over 7 feet squared will equal our intensity 2. 5 times 3 7 squared equals, baba boom, 0.92 millirads per second. 
and let's make it really obvious for our teacher to find. All right, that's using the formula. You had to remember a formula, you had to stick all the givens into the right place. I've got an easier way for you. So you wanna know the easy way? Sure you do. All right, decide what intensity, the new intensity, is that gonna be more or less than the old intensity? The old intensity of five is measured at three feet. Now when you back up to seven feet, you're stepping away from the campfire, you're gonna feel less heat. It's gonna be less intense. So it's gonna be less. You're further away. All right, now we're gonna just scale the intensity by the ratio of the distances squared. And we're gonna make sure that ratio is less than one, right? We can either put three over seven, which is less than one, or seven over three, and that's more than one. Well, we know our answer is gonna be less intense, so we're gonna put three over seven squared times five millirads per second. And that gives us, what do you know? It's the same answer, 0.92 millirads a second. That's, I like it the easier way. Let's make it obvious for our teacher. All right, here's our second problem. If the radiation dose to a patient was eight millirads at 180 centimeters distance from the tube, what would the dose be if the distance were reduced to 100 centimeters? Again, let's find our givens. I1's eight millirads. D1 is 180 centimeters, and D2 is 100 centimeters. Well, what are we solving for? We're solving for intensity two. We can work, work these backwards. I could give you intensity one and D1 and say what distance would you have to decrease to to make intensity two equal five millirads. Um, so be alert. I could give you any three of the four variables and ask you to solve for the other one. So here we'll do the math. We plug in eight millirads over I2 equals 100 centimeters over 180 centimeters. And we flip it around and we come up with 25.92 millirads, 25.92 millirads. And if you want to write 26 millirads, I will give you full credit. All right. So let's try the math the easy way. It's going to be more, right? We're going from 180 centimeters down to 100 centimeters. We're stepping closer to the fire. It's going to, the fire is going to feel more intense. Okay. And now we're just scale our intensity by the ratio of the distances squared. Don't forget to square. So 180 over 100 squared times 8 millirads, boom, gets us right to 25.92 millirads. Oh, and it's not I squared, it's I2. I2 equals 25.92 millirads, not I squared. Let's stick with this one as our correct answer. Sorry for that little misleader. I didn't clean up that last slide. Once again, I stole some images from Quinn Carroll's book, fantastic book, Radiography in the Digital Age, Physics Exposure and Radiation Biology. And you're gonna be doing many more problems just like this in your Bouchong book, in your Bouchong Evolve Online. Okay, so this is X-Ray Bob signing out. See you later.